and girls, today we are going to talk about the paint center. We're going to learn about some different kinds of paint, how to use your brushes, and also how to clean up the paint center. The first thing we're going to learn about is how to pour our tempera paint onto a paper plate as a palette. We're going to take our tempera bottles and just put a, a little dollop the size of a quarter on the paper plate. Now the paper plate is where we keep our plain colors and we're not going to mix the colors on the paper plate. We are also going to reuse the paper plates for other classes. After you get your tempera paint on your paper plate that you're going to share with other kids, we're going to talk about how to mix paint. We're going to mix our tempera paint on either a piece of scrap paper from the recycling or a magazine page. If you take a magazine page and you fold it in half, it makes a great little mixing palette. So you just dip your plain colors with your brush and you put a little glob of each one onto your newspaper or your magazine paper or your scrap paper and then you mix it with your brush. That's how we are going to be mixing colors this year. The next thing we're going to talk about is your paintbrushes. We are going to be using the paintbrushes that are a synthetic brush. They have a dark brownish red handle and when we use our brushes we want to be going back and forth with our brushes sort of holding your brush in the same direction as your brush stroke is going. So if you're going to the right, your handle should be pointed to the right. If you press down harder on your brush, you'll get a thicker line, and if you press lighter, you'll get a thinner line. Another thing we're going to talk about is how to wash out your brush. When you wash out your brush, you're going to take it and put it in, in your water cup and go back and forth with your brush. Just go back and forth, back and forth. And then you're going to take your brush and take a paper towel and wipe it off on a paper towel so it's not dripping. Most of the time you don't want a lot of extra water on your brush. When you're ready to start painting with tempera paint, you want to get a piece of construction paper out. And on the front of your paper, you're going to do a very light pencil sketch of your idea. You want to start with a light pencil because it's much easier to erase if you have a problem. When you use your paints, just remember we're going to get our brush just a little bit damp, get our paper, uh, our mixing palette ready, and just start making the colors you want, and then you're going to start painting them in. Tempera paint is really great on white paper. It also works well on colored paper if you add a little bit of white to your paint. So if you want to use yellow paint on colored paper, it works better if you add white to your yellow paint to make it a little lighter. The white paint helps it show up better. But basically, that's what tempera paint is all about. We just start painting with it. You can put it on thicker or you can get your brush wet and thin it down a lot like watercolor. The next two materials that we're going to talk about are our cake tempera paints and our watercolor paints. The first one we're going to talk about is the cake tempera paints. These are a solid form of tempera. They come in a palette like watercolors and they're hard like watercolors, but when you paint with them, they show up better on colored paper because they have a little bit of chalk added to them. So when you paint with them, you use them a lot like watercolor. You get your brush wet and you add a little bit of water to each color. You can pick each cup right out of the palette and then you just take your brush and you work your brush back and forth, back and forth to um, incorporate that water and paint together. And then you just paint with them, just like you would with watercolors. When they dry, however, you'll see that the colors look quite a bit brighter on colored paper than regular watercolors would. The next example I'm going to do is with watercolor paint. I'm going to start with a piece of watercolor paper and I'm going to add a little bit of water with my brush to each spot on my paint palette just to get that paint worked up a little. When I'm ready to use a color, I'm going to take my brush and go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in that color. Now the nice thing about watercolor paint is that you can use plain water to pull colors across your paper into other areas. So in this example, I'm painting part of my flower with red paint and then I'm putting plain water in the center of each petal and that plain water is going to suck the red color to the center of the flower. I'm also going to try putting some yellow and blue in the center of my flower and watch how that paint spreads on its own to flood other parts of my painting. 
The nice thing about watercolor paint is that if you leave it alone, beautiful things will happen all on their own. If you mess with it too much, you lose some of those beautiful effects. To clean up your paint center, you'll leave your palettes on the table and take your water cups with the brushes inside and set them inside the sink. Then you're going to take a sponge from the clean sponge basket and just wipe down any spots that look like they have paint on them. Alright everybody, thank you for watching and have fun painting!